So you only need about 150 of those exclusions to wipe out completely the efficacy of the drug. Modern medicine is based on the core ethical principle of informed consent, which gives patients the freedom to choose which medical care, if any, they wish to receive. But such informed consent can be said to have been given only if patients are informed about all the facts and possible harms of receiving a treatment. If we don't have all the details regarding the efficacy and safety of a new drug, then it follows that we cannot be informed. Therefore, we cannot give informed consent to receive a new drug. In the case of Pfizer's new COVID-19 messenger RNA vaccine, which the UK, Canada, and now the US just 15 minutes ago have just approved for use, do we have a clear understanding of all the facts about the efficacy and possible harms of this brand new vaccine? Well, let's see what information Health Canada has provided to the Canadian public. So here's the Health Canada website announcement page approved December 9th and provides a link to a number of documents related to this authorization. If you click on this link, it brings you to another page describing the Pfizer vaccine, uh, but you have to click around on four researchers to get to the product monograph, which is a scientific document that actually describes the evidence for the efficacy and safety of the drug and then other information about how to administer the vaccine. Uh, and this is 26 pages, but in terms of scientific details, uh, there's immediately, uh, you can tell, comparing it to a normal scientific paper, that there's a lot of missing information. Um, I was able to find a 53-page document from Pfizer that was given to the U.S. FDA. So somehow the U.S. demands twice as much information from drug companies, which is interesting in itself. Uh, and so, for instance, we can see here the list of clinical studies that uh, I've been used to yield the efficacy and safety evidence. So here you can see this longer term phase one, two, three, randomized placebo controlled observer blind trial involving uh, close to 44,000 participants in the US, Argentina, Brazil, Germany, South Africa, and Turkey. But even this document appears to be missing uh, tons of crucial information, including the protocol, the statistical analysis plan, and the actual aggregate and participant level data. These details are necessary to properly scrutinize the evidence to verify, for example, the soundness of the methodologies used, for example, how proper blinding of the participants and observers were achieved, details regarding the statistical analyses and making sure they weren't cherry-picked, and also verify the integrity and internal consistency of the actual data. And indeed, if we go to the trial registration page where the study was pre-registered, meaning that you have to register the study details prior to data collection, you will see all the way at the bottom that Pfizer admits that they will only provide access to individual de-identified participant data and related study documents to approved researchers or qu rather qualified researchers who meet many criteria and then have to be approved by a committee. And this even includes the protocol. And in science, a protocol is the precise steps taken to conduct the study and all participant experimenter interactions. And we'll come back to this. Uh, so they also fail to share the statistical analysis plan, which specifies how the analyses will be done, which in, is crucial because there's thousands of different ways to do analyses to test the same question, in this case, the efficacy and safety 
data. And indeed, we can go to the Pfizer website that allows you to request data. Uh, and here you can see all of the criteria <laughs> that must be met and all the technical hoops you must jump through. But also curious is it says the data, even if you're in the unlikely event you'll be approved, uh, will only be released uh, two years after the completion date of the study. So that is pretty scary stuff. Uh, and worst of all is that this internal product monograph is not peer-reviewed in the academic sense of sending the manuscript to independent scientists uh, who don't have billion-dollar conflicts of interest. And we know that peer review is itself, in itself, uh, flawed in, in many major ways. Furthermore, we are told Health Canada has independent scientists to review Pfizer's evidence, but it's not been disclosed who these independent scientists were. So we cannot confirm the independence and impartiality of such scientists. And indeed, Terence Young, chair of Drug Safety Canada, is quite concerned regarding all the details and data that drug companies are allowed to hide from Health Canada's drug reviewers. For example, in this article, he states, Health Canada still allows drug companies to redact key information from drug approval filings for competitive reasons. And another article, hiding patient-level clinical trial data is comparable to hiding from investigators the mechanical records of a commercial jet that's crashed. No sane person would help airlines keep them secret. And indeed, a potentially serious anomaly has been identified in Pfizer's 53 page product monograph. So if you turn to page 53, and this was tipped off by Steve Saylor on Twitter, this is page 18, so we can actually go to that specific spot. And these are listing exclusions. And in these types of studies, it's crucial to confirm that exclusions were about balance between the vaccine group and the placebo group. And they are more or less balanced, except all the way at the bottom here, it says that five times more participants were excluded in the vaccine group, 311 compared to 60. And they were excluded for important protocol deviations on or prior to seven days after dose two. So the analyses required that you wait at least seven days after the final, the, the second dose to start measuring whether they get infected with COVID or not. And so you might ask, well, what's a protocol deviation? And that's what he asked on Twitter. He hasn't received a response from the company or anyone, anyone else. And my reply was, well, how do we know what a protocol deviation if they are not willing to share the protocol, right? So again, from the registry page, you can see they admit they are not sharing the protocol, which is the exact steps taken and the exact, including the instructions given to participants to what they need to conform with. Because that's the logic here is if the participants are not following the conditions of participating in the study, then they can be excluded. But if you look at the numbers, this could be crucial anomaly that could completely wipe out the efficacy evidence. Because if you look at the numbers, you have 300 participants excluded for this vague reason. And if you look at the actual efficacy evidence on page 24. The main result is that the Pfizer vaccine prevents people from being infected. So here you can see that after two months, 162 of 20,000 participants got infected versus only eight in the vaccine group. So you only need about 100 
50 of those exclusion to wipe out completely the efficacy of the drug. And again, maybe it's a harmless, benign explanation for the unbalanced, this, this imbalance between the conditions. But we need to know uh, because this is really a big question mark that could be a game changer. But even without this anomaly, you just need more transparency so that you get more people, more independent researchers who don't have billion dollar conflict of interest to look over to make sure things check out, the data has integrity, the data is internally consistent. Uh, they just, to rule out any funny business, any data fudging or tweaking. Furthermore, increased transparency in these details is all the more important given the cloud of uncertainty hanging over a huge error made in a different vaccine clinical trial by AstraZeneca, which company officials and scientists failed to mention in their initial press release. The error involved a large subset of participants receiving the wrong concentration of the vaccine in the first dose, and the AstraZeneca still hasn't explained how such a major error occurred. And even more broadly, all these details are crucial to know from a scientific perspective because the reason scientific evidence can be trusted in the first place is that it can be shown to have withstood ruthless scrutiny by independent parties. But if all the relevant details aren't known, a study cannot be properly scrutinized. So therefore, it cannot have withstood independent scrutiny and so cannot be verified as trustworthy. And again, this is all the more crucial given the billions of dollars of profits on the line and given Big Pharma's poor track record of selling ineffective and harmful drugs resulting in numerous billion dollar class action lawsuits. And indeed, Terrence Young talks specifically about this. So for example, the U.S. National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, a vaccine court, has adjudicated about 20,000 claims of vaccine injury since 1988 and paid compensation totaling $4.4 billion to about 8,000 people, right? So they have a poor track record. So you should already be skeptical from their actual safety track record, but then you should be skeptical because of their unprecedented conflicts of interest. And then even without all of these, you should still just be skeptical from a scientific perspective where independent scrutiny, transparency, and replication are the key to making sure you're not fooling yourself or others. And so in summary, too few details have been shared regarding the efficacy and safety of Pfizer's new COVID-19 vaccine for Canadians to be able to provide informed consent. And perhaps Pfizer has privied Health Canada to more details in private but if so, the onus is on Canada to publicly release such details. Thank you. It's important that you, the taxpayer, engage with the videos to increase their visibility. So please like or dislike videos, leave a comment regarding points of clarification or other issues or topics you'd like us to cover. Leave comments pointing out any inaccuracies, mischaracterizations, errors. Finally, please consider making a donation so we can continue to create videos and achieve our goals of reforming research standards in academia. You can make a donation on our Patreon page, link to my left, or by making a one-time PayPal donation, link in the video description. Thank you.